Hi, I'm Tony, and welcome to block number two for the pixelated Halloween quilt along. We're going to be making the cauldron with this tutorial. Uh, remember, this tutorial was filmed live on YouTube, and I've edited it down and gotten all the nitty gritty for you, so you can follow along and make the cauldron block with me. Now, I like to print out my patterns, uh, and then that way I can write on them and I can do all the things, especially with a quilt along. Uh, it's important that I print this out and I write on this, especially because if this block is being made as part of the pixelated Halloween quilt along, use the following strips from previous blocks and do not cut additional strips of them. Deduct the number of strips in the chart below. So I'm going to show you how I do that to make it, you know, figure it out. So this is the first step. Now, if you are um, doing this as a standalone block, then you can just get your fabric and cut your fabric. Uh, we talked a little bit about fabric choice in block number one. Uh, these are all of the uh, Northcutt Toscana fabrics, which I absolutely adore and love because they're bright, they're vibrant, they are just amazing. So those are the fabrics that I am using. All right, so let's take a look at this. Um, now, like I said, I'm looking at this area right here where we're pulling from previous blocks. So here's my previous block. So let me go ahead and open this up. There we are. So here's all of my previous block stuff. And then I'm going to keep this right here. So this is, that was my pattern from last week for the bats. Uh, all right, so I need one black two and a half inch strip. Okay, so that would be this right here. So it's the remaining black strips. I just grab, so whatever black strips you have remaining. So even though mine have, um, I have two because I doubled it up, this would count as one strip. So let's do that. Okay, I have my black two and a half strip. And then down here where it says black two and a half strip, I'm going to change this to a one. So I want to cut one additional black two and a half inch strip. Okay, not two of them. The next thing I need is the dark gray two and a half inch strip, which I've got right there. And then that one is now a zero. I do not have to cut any two and a half inch strips of the dark gray. Cross that off. The next thing, black dark gray combined strip. Okay, well remember I've got one three and a half and one, I'm sorry, not three and a half, one two and a half and one one and a half. So grab these as well. I have a little gray piece there I didn't see. All right, so I'm looking for the black and the gray. Oh, here it is. So here is the black and the gray combined strip. So now I can cross off one of the black one and a half. See, do not cut one of the one and a half strips of each color, okay? So what I'm doing on my black is I'm crossing this off now to a one for one and a half. My dark gray, I'm doing a zero. Well, what's happened now with this dark gray? We don't have to cut anything. So I can take this dark gray and set it aside because we have zero across the board that we now have to cut for dark gray. Simple as that. All right, and then I've done that so I can cross that off. Next, the black, light, yellow combined strip. So I've got that right here, my black, light, yellow combined strip. Okay, and I don't have any extras of those. Uh, no, I don't. Awesome, so now I can take the rest of my pieces and set them aside. Now, my black, light, yellow. Okay, my black, let's cross this off. I now have zero one and a half inch strips that I have to cut for black and light yellow. I'm crossing off one, so I only need one. So now, after I've done that, I'm going to go to my page number two, where it says using the one and a half inch strips, sew the right sides together for each of the following combinations. I already have black and yellow, so let's cross off the black and light yellow, and black and gray. So we're crossing off the black and gray. So the only one we have to do is the light yellow and apple green. And we've just saved ourselves some time today with cutting strips and sewing strips together. 
All right, so I'm gonna set all of those aside. Now let's go back to page number one and finish cutting our strips. So on your charts, you should now have one black two and a half inch strip, three yellow two and a half inch strips, one one and a half inch strip for yellow, and apple green, nothing's changed because we haven't used apple green yet. And this is how you're going to mark them off and keep track of it throughout the entire quilt along. That way we have less waste. We're still gonna have a whole bunch of waste. At the end of this, that was my iron. At, at the end of this quilt along, we're going to have some leftover, we're gonna have some leftover waste. And I'm gonna show you what you can do with that in order to turn it into some really cool placemats. Um, but for now, we're gonna try to kind of lower our waist a bit so we don't have to do that. Now, if you're making a standalone block, again, all the things I just did, ignore, cut all your strips, make sure you do that. All right, now, step number one. Uh, let's see, our green. Ooh, I already have a green piece right here. What size is this? It is a four inch strip. It was probably from like an older, older strip that I had. All right, so an apple green and a two and a half inch strip and a one and a half inch strip. Uh, last week I showed basic rotary cutting. So if you are watching this as a standalone block, if you're not sure how to use a rotary cutter, you can refer back to the first, uh, the first tutorial that I did to show you some basic rotary cutting 101 stuff, uh, if you're not quite sure how to do that. So, but for today, I'm just gonna go ahead and move on. And I'm going to be using my Stripology ruler. I love this ruler so much. This is a Stripology squared. That way it doesn't take up as much room. All right, so I've got my Stripology squared in there. And I've got my rotary cutter. So we need a two and a half inch strip. And it's already squared up, so I didn't have to worry about that. And that's a one inch, so that is trash. Now, this one, I do have to square this up. So let me square up. Now, the nice thing I, I mentioned last week about the Stripology ruler is that the square up is that zero right there. So it's quite nice. There's your square up and you don't have to move it again. And then one and a half. And there's my one and a half piece. All right, I'm done with the apple green. I can set that aside. Now, for the black, you remember because I pulled the previous pieces, I'm only cutting a single black strip, a single two and a half inch strip. There we are. Whoops. Stay water. I knocked my water over. And then last but not least, the light yellow, I'm going to be cutting a few of them because the yellow in this case is our background. So let's do that and cut those. There we are. And our yellow, we are doing three, two and a half. See how fast this is? I love, love, love this, this um, uh, ruler. It goes super fast for cutting strips. Now, you notice what I was doing subconsciously? You may not be able to see it with my finger right here. That's where I finished cutting. So, because I, I, I really quickly went two and a half, five, seven and a half. Well, I don't wanna have to do the math again. So, something subconsciously I've started to do is put my finger where that last cut was. And then that way, I now have to do one, one and a half inch. So I can now know I ended up here. I don't have to move this or figure it out. I can just go one and a half and make my cut. So simple as that. All right, we've got those. So now my yellow is finished and I can set that aside. Now I'm going to be sewing together these two strips after I finish cutting my solids. Uh, now when you're cutting your solids, I went over this last week again, uh, but I'll give you a quick, quick refresher pull out my ironing pad. There we are. Now, whenever you're cutting solids, in fact, you know what? Let's use these black pieces first. 
Um, whenever you are cutting solids, it's always nice to be as efficient as possible when you're cutting those solids. So in the case of the black, the reason why I have two kind of like less than half strips is because it's easy, it's easier to cut them when you do it in stacks. So for example, I'm going to take this one right here and I'm going to use my ironing, my ironing, use my cutting mat to make sure it's lined up. And then I'm going to take another one and lay it right on top. So that now, whenever I'm cutting pieces, I'm cutting four pieces at a time. Now, even if it looks squared up, always, always, always square it up in this case, because you can't, you can't eyeball a perfect lineup. So I've got it squared up. So now I need eight, two and a half. So these are two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles. Well, that's four and then nine and that's eight right there i've got all of my rectangles in just two cuts so i have eight pieces of two and a half by four and a half then i need two two and a half inch squares well i only have the one so i really i have to iron this one and cut the remaining two and a half inch squares from this one so let's go ahead and do that really quickly. And after I finish cutting these two and a half inch squares, I'm going to speed up the tutorial video and finish cutting the rest of my fabrics. All right, and then two and a half. Because I kept it folded in half and ironed it in half, I was able to cut two pieces at the same time. So it speeds it up, it's a bit more efficient, it's great, and I'm done with the blacks. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut grays, yellows, and greens, speed up this video, we'll come back, and then we will sew together our only combination, the green and the yellow. And we're done with page one. Now let's go on to page two. Just like that, we are completely done with page number one. Just like that. All right, so going on to page number two, remember we marked off the combined strips for the black and gray and the yellow and black. So we don't have to sew those together. They're already there. But so I do have to sew together the green and the yellow. So we are going to sew these together using um, stripping methods. Uh, I am basically taking these right side to right side. I'm going to put them in my machine and then just sew the whole things together. You do not need pins. Uh, you do not need to iron it ahead of time. We're just going to go ahead and sew them. So let's do that. So we've got our combined piece sewn together. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it over and I'm gonna cut this in half. So we're just gonna fold this. Now I'm cutting it in a way to where I'm gonna maximize my selvages. So if you take a look at the selvages, oh, yep, yeah, the green's down there, there we are. I try to maximize those as much as I can. So as you see, it's not quite lined up, but the selvages are lined up so I can get the most fabric I can out of this. And then cut it in half because now what we're gonna do is we're gonna iron these in opposite directions. Meaning I'm ironing it towards the yellow. So I'm ironing this up here and I'm ironing this towards the green, just like that. So let's do it. Now it's important, very, very, very important with pixel quilting. Do not iron your seams open. Do not iron your seams towards the dark. It is extremely important that you iron these seams in the directions I ask you to iron them because that's how we get perfect points with our quilt. So if you iron these in opposite directions, you're going to get perfect points whenever you lay everything out. 
because as I'm ironing, if you take a look at the pattern, at step number four, and we're gonna talk about it when we start to lay things out. With step number four, you see that there's some arrows on there. Well, those arrows tell us which way. I don't like this iron. It spits a lot. Um, I can't wait for my Aliso to get for uh, my Aliso to come and I'm waiting for my new Aliso. I know, yes, I know iron. So anyways, so the, I, the arrows that are in step number four are the ways that the seams need to point. And that is so your rows are all lining up and you get perfect points every time. So it's very, very important that you iron them this way. All right, now let's do some trimming. And I'm going to take my combined pieces. So I've got my, my first one. Now I'm going to line this up so the top follows along the lines. And then I'm going to take my second one and I'm going to flip it up so that the greens are both on top and the yellows are both on the bottom. And we're going to nest these seams. All right. Take your fingers and kind of move it around in here so that you can feel that those seams are lined right up. And when those seams are lined right up, it looks like that. So you see how that one that's pointing towards the green and then that one is pointing towards the yellow? Well, whenever they're perfectly lined up like that, you get perfect points and it's perfectly lined up. So that is nesting the seams. That's making sure that your seams are lining up in the correct way. So let's lay this back down again, all lined up, and let's move this. Now, this step is not vitally important that these seams are perfectly nested. It's just a really, really good idea because if they're not nested, you may get a, your pieces may get a little crooked. Um, if they're nested, then when you're cutting both two pieces at the same time, they're the same size and you know they're straight. All right, so let's take a look at the green and the yellow. So I need two sets, because remember, we're cutting through two strips at the same time. So two strips at the same time. So two sets of two and a half. One, two, so I should have four total now. And then I need two sets of one and a half. One, two, and that's it. All right, so get rid of my squaring up. So I automatically squared it up on the side and lay them out. Now, when I lay my initial pieces out, I like to put them in two separate piles. This pile, everything goes towards the green. This pile, everything goes towards the yellow. And what that does, whenever I grab the pieces to lay them out, it makes it easier so that I know which way those arrows are going, all right? So let's go ahead and then do that. And then I take the one and a halfs and I lay them on top in the right piles. Now, whenever I lay this out for, you know, for, so that I can grab them and start laying my pieces out, I'll have them sitting over on the side just like that. So it's easy for me to grab them. But for now, until it's time, I'm just gonna stack those just like that and set it aside. All right, next, we're doing the gray and the black. Um, now the gray and the black, it wants one set of the two and a half by one and a half. And yep, this is already ironed. This is fine. I still have to square it up again, even if I don't have to iron it. So let's grab my rotary cutter and square this up. So I need one set and that's it. That's all you need for this. The rest of this can go there, and these two extra pieces can also go to the side. So throw that part away. Let's open this up and set it aside. Last but not least, the black and yellow. Now the black and yellow, I'm just making sure everything is nested up nicely and lined up. Uh, I need three sets of each. So three sets of the two and a half and three sets of the one and a half. 
So, oh, and I, I forgot to mention this week. If you're using the uh, the stripology ruler, there's a line that goes through. Take that line and line it up with the thread. Don't line it up to the top or the bottom. So you see how my six is kind of like off from that top and my three is off from the bottom because I'm lining it up with the thread. Because after you iron something, your fabric can get a little wonky. It can stretch out a little bit. So we don't have to worry about that if you're lining it up with the thread. All right, so three sets. One, two, three. All right, and then I need three sets of the one and a half. One, two, three. Fantastic. And I believe that's all of our pieces. Remember I said this week wasn't going to take us as long to do this step. So let's lay all of this out just like that. Oops, make sure I got the right piles. Yep, I've got the right piles. Step number four. So step number four uh, is we are going to start laying all of our pieces out. All right. I like to use a slip of paper in order to keep track of each of the rows as I'm going along, as I'm laying everything out. Now, you may look at this and go, why is there a piece of pink batting on your mat? It's just a, a scrap piece of pink batting. Well, that's because I am recording this in two parts on YouTube Live. And in those two parts on YouTube Live, Oh, you know what? I think I'm just going to do it this way. Um, I have to lay all these people pieces out this week, and next week we're actually going to be putting everything together. So I need to store this from week to week. And I was just going to lay it all out and then take it all away, then lay it all out again next week. However, Shelly in our YouTube live community has suggested using batting because your pieces will stick to the batting Your pieces will, now it's not going to stay. You got to roll this up, but it's going to hold everything in place so that next week I can easily combine them together and pin them. Isn't that a great idea? So we're going to do that. So we're using batting to hold everything in place as I'm laying it out. And the nice thing too, is I can move this down. And I can, as I'm laying it out, I can move the batting up so you can see all the rows as I'm laying them out without any of the issues. All right, so I think that's straight again. So let's do this. So we're taking a look at row number one. Now, you notice how each of these rows has an arrow. The arrow is which way your seams need to point, okay? Seems simple enough, right? Well. In this case, I think there is row, yes, let's take a look at row number six, okay? Row number six has got two pieces of a yellow and black combined that look like this. Now, in row number six, this first one, the yellow and black, our arrow points to the left. So in this case, I need to get the piece where the fabric points to the left over there. And then this piece needs to also point then to the black that's going to be on the right. So I'm going to go ahead and start laying my pieces out. Um, when I get to row number four, I so I'm going to speed up the video laying pieces out. When I get to row number four, where you have pieces that are touching each other, that are have um, combined, and you have to worry about nesting those seams, I'll stop, I'll come back, I'll explain that as I'm doing it, um, and then we'll speed up again, go down to row number six, I'll slow down, I'll show this again, all right, and then, uh, and then we'll keep on doing it. All right, so we've got that. All right, we've hit row number four, so let's take our yellow and black combined piece with the yellow on top. I just grabbed one. It didn't make a difference which way those seams point. So in this case, I grabbed the one where the seam goes towards the yellow. So I can feel and see that this seam points up towards that yellow. 
So I want to nest these seams. That means that my seams need to go in opposite directions so that they can bump up and nest. So that means my next piece is going to be a yellow and a green. So my seam needs to point down. So my seam needs to go towards the green because the yellow is on top. And then whenever we sew these two pieces together, let me line this up correctly. You see what happens? Those seams are in opposite directions, meaning you are gonna have perfect points every single time. Every single time. So that goes towards the green. So the next one needs to go up towards the yellow. And then the next one needs to go down towards the green for that. Now, this is my last piece for this. It goes towards the yellow. I have a problem. I can't, I can't do this or else these seams are both going in the same direction. I needed to go the opposite direction. It's, it's a crisis. It's really not. Just re-iron it. Seriously, just, just take, take your iron. Let me put my ironing pad there and re-iron the seam. So in this case, I, w I, I always like to iron the back first and then iron the front. And now, whoo, look at that. It stayed. I'm very happy. And now it's pointing in the correct direction. So I can lay that back down and we've got it. All right, so we've got that one. Now the next one doesn't make a difference. It's a solid piece. This is fine. Come on. There we are. There we are. We've got our solid piece. And then we've got that right there. Now, in this case, I chose the one going down towards the green. So the next one needs to go up towards the yellow. There we are. That's up towards the yellow. And that's it. And then the rest I'm going to lay out like it is. Now, on my batting piece, I've run out of room a little bit over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of move these over and group them up a touch. So if you see me grouping them up just a touch, it just means that I've got a lot of pieces and I've kind of run out of room on my batting so that I'm just kind of squishing it in a bit, just like that. All right, so I'm going to speed it up. And then when I get to the seams pointing in those directions, I will stop it again and uh, we'll take a look at it. All right, row number six. So row number six, remember I said we had these two pieces here and here um, that we had to worry about which way they were facing? Well, in this case, I've laid out my first piece of row six. So now I have a yellow and black and the arrow's going to the left. That means my seam needs to go towards the yellow. So that one's gonna go right there, just like that. Uh, and then I need a black and gray piece. It doesn't, it's not lining up with any other seam. So I don't have to worry about the direction of it. And then some black pieces. And then the other gray and black. We'll put that one right there. And then now here's my other piece. In this case, it needs to go towards the black because row number six, our seams go to the left, just like that. And then our last piece. So hopefully that shows you how to lay all the pieces out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish up laying the rest of my pieces out, speed up the video, and then we'll come back and take a look at it. And there's our cauldron pieces. Now you'll notice you will have a single combined yellow and green piece left over. That's perfectly fine. You can take this and set it aside for future blocks, just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to wrap this up and protect this just like that. So that next week my pieces will be ready to go. And I'm just going to roll it up just like that and my pieces are ready. Now, when I start the next part about sewing them together, it's not gonna be on the batting anymore because I wanna use my cutting mat. I will take them off of the batting in order to put it onto the cutting mat. So we'll start the next part with the pieces all laid out and ready to start sewing. Let's go ahead and do the next step. So this was 
step number three, number four. This is step number four. So we have finished with page number two, and we're going on to the last page of our instructions. So we want to sew together the two pieces that need to be assembled horizontally. So that would be these two right there. Now, in other blocks, we may have seams that are butting up against those. This one we do not. So it does not make a difference which way we pin and iron these. I can just take these and pin them any which way. So I'm just going to go ahead and pin these. I'm going to sew these using a quarter inch seam. I'm going to iron them and then I will come back, put them in place, and I will show you how we're going to pin all of the rows to make it fast and efficient for your sewing. All right, so I've got my combined pieces together. So let's go on to step number six. Now, step number six, remember, we've got all of those arrows and the arrows point into the direction that we want our seams to point. We talked about this in uh, step number four when we were laying everything out. Well, now it's important because that's the way that we want the entire row to go. So in the case of the last row, row, there's no numbers on this one, row number nine. So in the case of row number nine, I want to go to the right. And in fact, I'm going to go off of this page just because I want to make sure that I call out those correct row numbers. Now, you can't see it over here, but what I do is I take a sheet of paper and I cover up the rest of the pattern so I know exactly the row that I'm working on and I know which way those arrows need to go. All right, so row number nine. This arrow goes to the right. So that means that I want to iron all of my seams that way. Well, the easiest and fastest way to do that is just to go from pinning to sewing to ironing without having to lay it out and, and take another look. So the fastest way that I've learned how to do that is if the arrow goes to the right, we pick up that right piece, we flip it over the left piece, and then I pin it in place. And what that does is if I just take this exactly like it is and go to the sewing machine and sew it and then go to the iron and iron it, the arrows are going to go that way. And that's the way that I want to go. So keep that in mind. Sorry, I knocked that piece over. Keep that in mind as you're doing it. If the arrow goes to the right, I'm picking up that right piece, putting it over that left piece and then pinning it into place. Right over left, pin it into place. Now row number eight, the arrow goes to the left. So the arrow goes the opposite direction. So going to the left, that means I'm going to pick up the left piece, flip it over the right piece and pin that into place. And that's all you do is you take a look at which way those arrows go. And then that is how you pin it. So I'm going to finish pinning all of these, speed up the video, and then I will come back and we'll do some sewing. pieces are pinned. So now I'm going to be efficient and do all the sewing. So I like to call it passes. So this is the first pass where I have pinned all the rows. Now I'm going to sew them and then iron them. And then I'll go through another pass and so on and so on. Now when I'm sewing it, you'll see me sitting at the machine. I'll be using a quarter inch seam, actually a scant quarter inch. Uh, if you're not familiar with the scant quarter inch, there's a link down below to my video on what is a scant quarter inch. Um, so I'll be sewing these with a scant quarter inch. All I'm going to be doing it is grabbing it from here, taking it to my sewing machine, sewing them, separating them, and bringing it back over here, and then setting it right there. And then I'll speed up the video, I'll do all that, and then I will come back to show you how we iron all of them. So 
So I've got everything sewn. So now let's iron it. Now when I'm ironing it, I pick this up from over here and all I'm doing is I'm laying my pieces out just like this. And when you iron it, make sure that you iron those seams because we want to lock those seams in to make them a little stronger, a little nicer. And then, and what that does, it actually helps make sure that those seams go straighter whenever you iron them like this. Now remember, when you're ironing your seams, do not iron them open. It is important that you iron them, that you iron them to the side because we want to make sure that it's appropriate and that's how they lay out. Because remember, row number nine, all of our seams go to the right. So we have to make sure that everything gets ironed to the right. Okay, so I'm gonna just take these, I'm gonna set that aside, and I'm gonna grab my next set. And then I'm gonna lay that set out. And that's all I'm doing. So remember how I said that however we sewed and ironed these, well, that's how we are going to do them. Now, whenever I was pinning them, you notice there's pieces of fabric that were left alone. These little, I call them my little lonely pieces. Um, and I left the last piece off in every single case. Don't worry about those pieces. Whenever we go to pin it the next time, you always wanna make sure to include these little pieces here uh, and leave off that first piece. So I'll show you what I mean when I get to that. So for right now, I'm gonna finish ironing. I'm gonna speed up the video. We're gonna just take them from here, iron them, bring them back again, and then I'll come back and we'll work on our second pass. We've got our first pass ironed and done. So I was talking about these little lonely pieces. I was counting and I think they're all even. So there's three pieces here and that one, that's a fourth. So I can just include that one there. Uh, one, two, three, four. Oh, here we go. Here's one with five. So here's one, two, three, four, five pieces. I've already left out that last piece. So I want to make sure that I include it this pass. So I'm going to take this first piece and that first piece I'm going to set aside and then uh, pin the rest of those together. Now, after I finished ironing them and I set them aside, I made sure to look to see which way those seams are pointing. This is row number nine. Row number nine, the seams are pointing to the right. So I have to make sure for row number nine, the seams go that way. If you flip this and go the other way, well, that's not going to work. This way is the way you want to go. So for example, if I were to take this and lay this completely out, that is my row and it's already laid out, ready to go. So let's go, I'm going to go ahead and do this for the rows. So I'm going to lay it out just to make sure everything looks good, make sure I haven't made any mistakes and then I'll pin them. Now, when I have a case of this, where I have three pieces for row number nine, I'm gonna pin it all at once. So I'm gonna take this piece, I'm gonna flip this over, fold this back, and pin this into place. So let's do that. And then I'm gonna take the other piece. And for me, this is a lot easier to just sew both sides at the same time when I'm sewing the rows together. It's just a lot easier and nicer for me. There we are. And then row number nine is complete, has one more pass ready to go. Uh, same thing with row number eight. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin all these. I'll get all that done and then I'll come back and we'll talk about sewing them, sewing the passes and, and what I'm gonna do with those. Actually, no, cause we're not gonna, yes, yes. I'll come back and we'll talk about sewing them um, and then we'll do that. And the second pass is pinned. Now, the reason I wanted to stop and talk to you before I sewed this is because rows number nine, eight, and one up there all have um, a three. So it's three pieces that were, that were pinned together, one on each side. I'm not gonna sew those. I'm ignoring those, I'm skipping them. In this pass, I'm only doing rows two through seven. 
and then that way I can get them all either to a single piece, whether it's one piece of two or one piece of three, so that I can just get the last pass of uh, just all of the rows together. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew these, iron these, we'll come back and we'll go ahead and then work on the, uh, the last pass. And now to, to pin the last pass. So same thing. So with row number seven to the right, um, I have two pieces, so I'm just gonna sew them together. And this is to the right, so right over left, and pin that into place. Now, after I do these, I am going to sew everything. So I'm gonna get all of these rows sewn together. I'm gonna iron them, and then I'm gonna lay each of the rows out. Once I, I sew and iron these and lay them out, then I'll show you how we're going to sew the rows together. Um, so we'll take line by line. So I'll take row nine and sew it to row eight and so on and so on. Uh, but I'll show you the trick of how to sew those together, how to uh, uh, make sure the seams match up, uh, how to ease those seams and how to do all of that. So I'm gonna speed up the video. I'm gonna finish pinning, uh, sew, iron, and then we'll come back to show you how to combine these rows. Let's sew these rows together. So let's take our row number nine what we wanna do is take this row number nine, we wanna flip this over our row number eight, and we wanna make sure that our seams are lined up. Um, our seams are going in opposite directions. So for example, this first seam right there, you see how the bottom piece, the pieces go to the left, the top piece, the pieces go to the right. And this is why we wanna make sure that these seams are following the arrows, that your arrows are, that your seams are ironed in those opposite directions, because if we make sure that the seam is perfectly lined up, you see how that becomes a perfect point. You see how beautiful those seams line up right there? And that's the whole point of this. So what you wanna do is take the bottom, flip it over the top, and you wanna find those seams. Find with your finger and, and kind of wiggle your finger around to make sure that those seams lock into place right there. And then that's what you wanna pin. So let me find the next one. The next one's, oh, not all the way down until down here. There are only two seams for the combination of row nine and row number eight. So these are the only two seams right there and right there where my fingers are that you have to worry about lining those up. Then you go back and do the rest. So I'm gonna do that center one right here. So I'm gonna move this all around. Now, if your top or your bottom is bigger than the other, then what you wanna do is take these two and you would kinda of wanna pull these in order to make sure that they're straight and then start from the center and put a pin in there and then kind of pull it and put a pin in it. But make sure that you're lining those points up. Now, anytime you have a seam, whether it's on the top or whether it's on the bottom, there's a seam right there. Put pins in there because as you're sewing, you don't want this seam to flip up the opposite direction or else it's gonna add extra bulk to the back of your top and that extra bulk may make it a little harder for whenever you go to quilt it. Now, if you do that, it's not the end of the world. You don't have to completely take everything out and redo it, but it is totally, totally fine. All right, so that is how you're sewing the rows. Now, after you do this, all you're gonna do is you're gonna bring it to your machine, do the same exact thing, sew it with a scant quarter inch or quarter inch, whatever you, you're sewing it with, uh, ironing it. Now, when you iron these rows after sewing them, it does not make a difference which way you iron them. 
So for the rows themselves, the combining the rows together, you can iron your seams open. You can iron them to the side. Doesn't matter which side you do. I do it to the side and I just pick a random side. Uh, but it honestly doesn't make a difference. Uh, and that's it. Now, once you do that, then keep sewing these rows together over and over and keep going. So I'm going to speed up this video. You're going to see me sewing these rows together. You're going to see me ironing them, panning them, doing all the things. And then we're going to come back and I'm going to unveil the finished block. And that's the cauldron block. I love these colors from Northcott so much. These are so cool. I absolutely love it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video as well as follow my YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, Pinterest, all the things and my, my Quite Nerdy Quilters Facebook group. And don't forget about Twitch, where I stream live and I also stream live on YouTube. And then we interact and we chat and swing by. My schedules are always on my social media on Monday mornings.